Hey, Ray Delvecchio here from WebsiteProfitCourse.com. Today, you're going to learn an easy way to add better spam protection to Contact Form 7, which is one of the most popular form plugins on WordPress. And I have this template built out, a business template for a roofing website, which most of my clients are contractors. They tend to get the same cold emails and spam messages. So what we're going to do is filter out the message. If there's certain words in there, we'll end up showing an error message here, and that way the email isn't actually sent. And by the way, the last tutorial that I released was building this entire business template using Divi, which is one of the most popular drag and drop builder themes out there. So if you want to check that out, I'll link it up in the top right. But for now, we'll move over to the WordPress admin area where I have this contact form open. And this is the text area that we're going to filter. We have our name lead comments in here. So we're going to have to edit PHP code to filter this message. And you can do that in one of two ways. The easiest is through the functions.php file, which funny enough, if I go over to the themes here, I mentioned in the last tutorial that you don't need to create a child theme with Divi if you're not editing PHP code. But in this case, if you do edit the functions.php file, you're going to want to have a child theme because otherwise when Divi is updated, it's going to overwrite that functions.php file and you don't want that to happen. The alternative method that I'm going to do today is by updating this code in a plugin which I have another tutorial showing you how to do that. Build a custom WordPress plugin with your own code, and it doesn't need to be approved. You can just upload it to your website. So that's another tutorial, which I'll link up in the top right. So let's open up the code right now. I got this in Notepad++, which is my favorite code editor. This is it right here. What we need to do is add a filter, which this is a WordPress function. If you look this up, you'll find the documentation within the WordPress reference guide. And Contact Form 7 gives you this hook. WPCF7, that stands for WordPress Contact Form 7. And you can validate any of the inputs. So for this one, we're validating the text area. And then we're binding this function that we have up here to this hook. Within this function, we set our list of bad words. So this is an array. And as I mentioned, a lot of the spam emails that I was getting had similar themes to them. Obviously, they have links in them. So I'm looking for any text relating to links like the prefixes or the suffixes, you know, anything related to web, services, SEO keywords, nobody's going to include that on a roofing lead inquiry. So what I recommend is go through your spam emails and see what types of messages that you're getting and pick out any words that are shared between your spam emails and add them to this array. And then here we check our text area. So I got to update this CF7 underscore message with the name of our text area. So let me go back to WordPress. And this is our text area, so I just got to copy the name lead comments. Let me go back to Notepad++, and I'll paste it into these three areas. I have a tutorial on Notepad++, which I'll link up in the top right. One of the reasons I like it is for this. When you double-click a word or a variable within code, it'll highlight it everywhere, so it makes it really easy to see where you're editing. So the first thing that we do here is we set our message. So if this lead comments form is set, we're going to trim it, which I think just removes the white space. I'd have to look this up, but this is a PHP function. And then this is where the magic happens. We run a loop that goes through each one of these bad words. And then if we find that bad word somewhere within our message variable, we're going to invalidate our contact form and we're going to display this error message. So we'll know this code is working if we get the specific error message. And then lastly, we return that invalidated result. So that's how this filter works. It's pretty simple. And like I said, all you have to do is copy this code right here to your functions.php file of your child theme or within the custom plugin code that I mentioned before. And I'll include a link where you can get this code in the description below. So let's save this. And because this is a plugin, I got to upload the files. So I'm going to jump over to FileZilla. And this is an FTP program that lets you drag and drop files from your computer to your web server. So I have the website open here on the right. Let me drag and drop this plugin. And if we go over to our WordPress admin area, we'll be able to activate that plugin. Let's go to our plugin section. We should see it here if everything goes well without errors. Same thing with activation. Now we can test our form. Let's go back to our website, refresh the page. I'll jump down to the quote form, and I'm just going to try and send this as a spam message. So I'm just going to include the term SEO. And if I click the send now button, hopefully we get our error message. And there you go. Your message has suspicious content. So our filter is working correctly. Go ahead and grab the code below. 
Give this a shot on your website, and like I showed you, you can use this type of filtering on other input types. It's not limited to text areas. Take a look at PHP functions along with the WordPress developer reference guide to see what options are available to you. You don't have to be a full-blown web developer to get into editing with code. I think it's one of the best ways to learn WordPress, to start tinkering with these little things that are available to you. If you're still a beginner or maybe an intermediate WordPress user who doesn't necessarily use it that often and you want a refresher, I got a free WordPress training course that you can take. Go to WebsiteProfitCourse.com slash WP101. That's going to take you through a tour of the admin area. You'll get an explanation of the back end that we were looking at with the FTP program, the folder structure, the hierarchy, all that kind of stuff. It's going to give you a great high-level overview of how WordPress works. If you are a little bit more of an advanced user, you can put together a website pretty easily, and you want to take those skills and start freelancing, download my giveaway, 15 Tools to Start Your Web Design Business. To download that, go to WebsiteProfitCourse.com, and all of these links that I mentioned in this video will be in the description below. Last but not least, give this video a thumbs up if it helped you out. And make sure you subscribe to my channel to get more WordPress and freelancing videos. And if you got any questions regarding this video, leave it in the comments below. I really appreciate you making it to the end of this video, and I'll link up a few others here if you want to keep on learning.